Hey everybody, welcome to Bean of the Week. I've got some really nice red beans here. Can't really see them, but they're really nice beans. They're called Hidatsa Red Beans, and they look kind of like, they're bigger than red beans, but they're, um, they're not quite as big as a pinto bean. So if you can see one, Let's see if I can hold one up so you can see it. You know, it's not it's not super small, but it's not really big either. So I'm gonna set these aside and we'll mess around with them. I have been cooking those beans for a long time. So I've been cooking those beans since, I think I started them at 10 o'clock. Hi, Ellen. I started them about 10 o'clock and I boiled them for about 20 minutes, like the Rancho Gordo way. And then after they boiled for about 20 minutes, I turned them to low. And so they've been simmering since um, probably 10.30. So that's 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, about three hours. And they're just now at three and a half hours what I would consider done. So that's why you can't tell how long the beans are gonna take. Some of them you think are gonna take a short time. Hi, Les. Hi, Melanie. Uh, she thinks she has these beans. Okay, just be aware they're going to take longer to cook than what you think. So um, this recipe, I'm going to get prepared over here. I'll show you my ingredients over here. This recipe has some different ingredients. It has some butternut squash, which is not typical. And then we're using some chili powder. I ordered some chili powder from Fresh Jack's. Oh, I don't think I have my reverse screen on. Oh, well. Um, I don't think I can change it now, you guys. There's a way I can change the screen so that you're not seeing it backwards. But anyway, I've got paprika. I have some Spanish paprika that I'm not going to use because I don't really like Spanish paprika. I've got some cumin, Rancho Gordo Oregano. And then the other two strange ingredients are chives, chives, cloves, and, and allspice. And I'm using some uh, Chamayo chili powder that I picked up in Chamayo, New Mexico quite a while ago. And it's really, really special chili powder. I don't usually use it very often because, you know, it's kind of rare and hard to get, but I think it'd be really good. Um, somebody loves my shirt, thank you. I thought I would wear something bright today for a change. What is the difference between Spanish paprika uh, it's just a, it's a smoky paprika. If you look at the side, it says, um, it's uh, moderately spicy and they smoke it. So it's got that really strong kind of a smoke flavor. And some people really like that. Um, that's really, has never really been my thing. I don't know why, I'm just not a, a big fan of it. I'm gonna turn my stove on here. So I've got my beans. They're still on simmer, but they're cooked pretty much all the way, so they don't really need to cook anymore, but I'm gonna keep them cooking back there because I wanna make sure that they're gonna to continue to soften, although they're pretty good right now. Uh, I made the whole pound. Usually I make half a pound, but since it was a chili, I thought that it would be a good thing to have around. It's a good thing to have in the freezer. So I thought I'll just you know make enough to have chili. Why not? So um, there's a lot of bird activity out here. I'm distracted. I, I wish you could see the number of birds. I guess spring must be coming, but they're just coming in like flocks of them show up and they just uh, fly right by the window all the time. So that's, if you see me glance to the side, I'm looking at the birds. Um, we saw the Roadrunner yesterday and we haven't seen the Roadrunner since uh, winter. So the Roadrunner is really cool because he's just like the Roadrunner in the cartoons. He runs across the, the yard and, and goes really fast. So he's really cool. Um, also, there's a thing called um, notifications on Facebook Live now. So I, was, I got a message from Facebook and it said to be sure to tell people when you're watching me on Facebook Live to click the bell and there's a bell, but you have to be on the full screen of Facebook Live, and there's a little bell. And if you click that, you'll be notified whenever I go live. It will, there'll be something that will show up and it'll say, 
you know, Chef Julia is going live. So look for the bell, go to the full screen of Facebook and look for the bell and click on the bell if you want to be notified. Maybe, you know, that's not what you want, but if you did. So before we get started on putting the ingredients in our chili, which is not going to be, take that long because there's not that many ingredients, I'm turning the stove down. I want to talk about the butternut squash because um, what I did was I'm using a recipe that came in my bean subscription. So whenever you get a subscription box from the Rancho Gordo Beans, they send a big newsletter and it is big and, and it has different suggestions of how to use the beans. Well, they're almost always very oily. You know, they, like even this one that I'm adapting from this one starts out with four tablespoons of olive oil. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, I never follow their recipes, but I kind of use them as guidelines. So in this one, instead of using tomatoes as a predominant background for the chili, it's using winter squash and cumin and um, paprika and chili powder and other stuff. But the idea of the, of the guy, the Rancho Gordo guy, was he wanted a chili that didn't have, the tomato didn't take over the, taste of the chili powder, so he came up with this idea. So we're gonna try it. I haven't made this before, so if it's a big flop, then blame me, but I, you know, I don't think anything could go wrong. It's just squash, beans, and a broth. So it's just gonna taste like beans with butternut squash, and that's not a bad thing. I like butternut squash. So I chopped it up into these nice little beautiful cubes. I did this, I didn't buy them at the store, so how did I do that? And I thought I would share that with you just quickly so that when you get ready to do yours, it won't be a big deal. So, you know, when you get the butternut squash, you can peel it with just a vegetable peeler. It's kind of hard, let me have you look down here. You have to get a good hold on it. But the, the um, peeling of the squash comes right off. It's pretty easy. I peeled the whole squash. It's easier when you're doing it in big. So I basically, before I cut it, I peeled it with my vegetable peeler in big pieces. So I have one of these, just a plain vegetable peeler, and I peeled the outside of the squash all the way around. So what that does is it makes it a lot easier to cut. So then when you cut, you, then you take the seeds out, and when you cut butternut squash, it's a hard squash, but once you peel it, it's easier to cut. And what I do is I keep my hands out of the way, so I cut it with my hand out of the way, and put a lot of pressure on it, you know, so you really kind of have to bear down. And then once you have it cut into some slabs like this, of course you cut the end off. <laughs> then what I did was I cut the slabs into strips, and then I cut those strips into little cubes. So they came out to be, you know, nice little cubes, as much as possible, you know, some of the pieces are not gonna cooperate but that's how I got the nice little cubes, okay? So that's what you do with the butternut squash, is be sure that you have a good way of um, cutting it and start by peeling it. I think that sometimes people get overwhelmed by winter squash and they look at it and they say, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with that? You know, it's huge and you know, how am I gonna handle that? So that's the way to handle it. So I've got my pot over here and I'm using I have, uh, my beans are in this pot, so they've been cooking, like I said, I use the Rancho Gordo method, so they've been cooking for quite a long time, I would say probably four hours. And um, this recipe calls for putting the spices in another pan and letting the spices kind of warm up and then adding the beans and the butternut squash. So I'm gonna kind of go by some of this recipe and I'm going to, um, just put the, the different spices in here to warm them up. So I'm gonna start with the chili powder. And this is another thing that always kind of gets me. Well here, I'll, actually I'll start with the cumin. A tablespoon of cumin, which seems like a lot, but I'll go ahead and use a whole tablespoon. You know, this recipe, like a lot of recipes, um, starts out by saying that you should use a third to a half cup of chili powder. Well, I never use that much chili powder because when I have done that, it's been overwhelmingly way too much chili powder and it's overpowering. I don't care what the chili powder is. So 
a fourth of a cup of chili powder would be four tablespoons. And I think that's plenty. So I'm gonna put four tablespoons of chili powder in here. And I have two kinds. I have Fresh Jack's, which is a company that makes a bunch of spices. And I've ordered some spices from them. And I ordered their chili powder blend, which has cayenne pepper, cumin, garlic, salt, coriander, chipotle pepper. It's got a bunch of stuff. So whatever chili powder you like, just put a couple tablespoons in. And then I'm gonna use some of my authentic Chamayo, uh, whatever it is, $30 a pound chili powder. It still smells good. We got it quite a while ago. It's been in the freezer. So spices will keep in the freezer. So I'm gonna use a couple tablespoons of that. That's still a lot to me, that's four tablespoons. But a half a cup, no, 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 no. A third of a cup, that's too much. We're gonna go with four tablespoons. I see Melinda, uh, UT, or Ute, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, are watching. Thanks for watching, and again, remember, if you hit the bell notification, then whenever I go live, you'll get notified. Okay, so I've got the cumin, the chili powder, and then this um, suggestion of cloves and allspice. In um, the recipe that Rancho Gordo sent, they said to use five cloves and two whole allspice. No, no, no. That would be overwhelming. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna use a pinch of cloves, just a little pinch. Cloves are very strong. I don't think cloves are, I don't want my chili to have a strong taste of cloves. That's just not my thing. So we're gonna use a pinch of cloves and a pinch of allspice. And allspice is really strong too. You do not want your food to taste like allspice. A tablespoon of Rancho Gordo oregano, Mexican oregano. Put that in. And Mexican oregano is a little bit different. It's a, it's a little bit more fruity, lighter. You can see it's a, it's a different plant than European oregano. It has a different flavor profile. Okay, and then I think we're almost done with our spices. We have um, some paprika, a teaspoon of paprika. So our choices with paprika are regular paprika, which is what I'm gonna use, or we could use smoked paprika. So why would we use smoked paprika instead of regular paprika? Well, some people like it uh, more smoky. They like the smoky flavor, and I respect that. Uh, let's see. You know, it, it has a distinctive flavor. I might just put a little sprinkle in here. But you see, I just put a little sprinkle in my pot. I didn't put a lot. I've just been putting the spices in this pot here. And it's turned on low. I didn't put a lot because I don't really, I'm not a big fan of it. And then I have my mushroom powder. I'm just going to put a teaspoon of that in. This is, um, you can use porcini, porcini mushroom powder. I happen to have this uh, shiitake mushroom powder, and that's just kind of an umami thing. It just gives it, you know, the little extra boost. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of mixing these spices up, and it's not really gonna do much. It's kind of on low heat. And when you warm up your spices, that's supposed to help them kind of bloom, you know, and uh, taste better. Let's see, Michelle said, have you sent out emails for Saturday's class? Oh, Michelle Tremblay, yes, yours came back to me because I wrote your email address wrong. I had it T-R-E-N instead of T-R-E-M. So I'm gonna send them out after I get done with this video. So I'm so sorry. Uh, Christine said, I don't care for smoked paprika either. Prefer regular. Okay, so I think it's, um, you know, I have taste, my taste buds I think are different because like I don't, I'm not a big fan of balsamic vinegar either and some people love it. Carolyn Cunningham is watching. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry, Michelle. I, I sent out a bunch of emails for the travel class coming up on Saturday. If you haven't been watching my posts, my whole room is full of appliances and stuff for this class. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'm gonna make, in fact, this afternoon, I'm gonna make another version of chili for the travel class, just like a demo, uh, so I can take a picture of it. I'm gonna make hotel room chili, but I'm not gonna use this chili. I'm gonna make it from 
scratch. So we'll see, and I'll post a picture of it. I'm gonna serve it with a baked potato, just because I think that's something easy to make. All right, so now after this has had time to kind of toast the spices, and when you're toasting the spices, you don't wanna walk away from it because the spices can go from being perfect to being burnt in no time at all. You could walk away from it and come back to a big mess and you don't want that, you know, do all this work and come back and your spices are burnt and then everything is gonna taste like burnt spices. So after you toast the spices, then um, we're gonna add the, the squash, okay? And then we'll just coat the squash with the spices. So I think you can see this. I'll get you closer. Use my cutting board since I don't really need it. I'll get you closer so you can see what's in the pan. So you see I've got the the uh, butternut squash and all the spices in here. And it's just kind of coating it, but since there's no oil, it doesn't have anything to stick to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my vegetable broth now. Okay, I have two cups of vegetable broth, and I'm adding about half of it because I want the spices to coat the butternut squash. And that was the purpose of having in the original recipe, having a bunch of olive oil. See if there's any questions. Uh, no, I don't see any questions. If you have any questions, just ask me. Okay, so here I've got the, it's kind of developed into a paste. And then I've got this the butternut squash in here. And I'm just kind of letting it coat the butternut squash. And we'll just do this for a couple of minutes. And then, like I said, I've got my beans. And I'm going to bring my beans closer so you can see them. And I'll probably finally turn them off the heat. So you can see my beans are here, and they're done. You know, how, how can you tell if the beans are done? I'm sure people want to know that. It's kind of like, how do you know they're done? Well, you know they're done when you taste one, and the skins are soft. When you bite into it, you don't taste that starchy, underdone taste of beans. Uh, Maureen, um, Melanie says, sweet potatoes, orange ones might work. Um, in this recipe, oh yeah, I think they would. I think any kind of uh, vegetable would work. I think the uh, in the original recipe for this, he used corn and summer squash. So I think basically you could put anything in here. You're just taking some kind of vegetable and you're coating it with chili powder and then you're adding some beans okay so now what we're going to do is i'm going to add the beans in their broth and cook it for 20 minutes and i'm going to add some salt okay i'm going to put you back here so i'm going to add a bunch of these beans so i need to add six cups of the beans Let's see if there's any questions uh, valerie's husband doesn't like squash that's my reply oh okay yeah try sweet potatoes so one and I'm, you know, not using the broth, but I'm not worrying about draining it all because we're going to use some of the broth. Two, three, four. I'm going to have to that. Five, six. And there's still some beans left in here, so I'm going to put all of them in here because... That would be silly to leave some behind. And then I'm gonna put a couple cups of the bean broth. So basically what this ended up being was my whole pan, I basically put everything in here. It turned out to be about six cups of beans and then two cups of bean broth is what I had left after I got through cooking my beans. Okay, so, but don't go by how I did it because you know, uh, when I cook my beans, I have it, uh, I do it where I let the broth reduce and then I add some toward the end, but I kind of have a way to have just the right amount of bean broth so that it's kind of concentrated and it, it's, you know, there's not too much, but there's not too little, but apparently that's not something that everybody does. I've heard a lot of people 
say that they end up with way too much bean broth and it, their beans are kind of watery. Well, that's because you added too much water to your beans when they were cooking. We just want to keep enough water in there to cover the beans, but not so much that it's, you know, soaking the beans. Uh, Melanie said, did you have to add more water when you were cooking the beans for four hours? Yes, I did, Melanie. Uh, I always add more water when I'm cooking the beans because it's never going to be enough. They cook, it starts to cook down. When I started cooking the beans, the water was almost up to the top of my pot. And then as it cooked, the water, you know, it cooks down and it cooked down to where it wasn't really covering the beans all the way. When it gets to that point, I boil water in my kettle right next to the stove and I add boiling water, enough to cover the beans by, I would say about half an inch or so. So I cover the beans by about half an inch. I'm gonna turn this up to bring it to a boil. I cover the beans by about half an inch. And then, you know, I let it, I, I put the cover on it and it continues to cook down. It will continue to cook down. And then, you know, maybe another half an hour or so, I'll add a little bit more water. So throughout the whole cooking time, I'm adding water but not a lot like i'm not you know putting a ton of water in there just enough to cover it keep the beans covered and then the last 30 minutes then i'll add a little salt i'm about to sneeze <coughs> Whew, i think that chili powder started activating and going in my room and the last 30 minutes then what i will do is i will add some salt like a half a teaspoon of salt and then um, I'll leave the cover off the last 30 minutes and let the beans cook with the salt and then they develop, the broth kind of thickens. So see now it's starting to come to a boil. You can see it, it's starting to bubble. And I'll let it kind of get up to temperature because I want the squash to cook. Let's see if there's a question. Um, do you keep the lid on the pot while cooking? Yes. Now you guys need to go watch the Rancho Gordo YouTube video of how to cook Rancho Gordo beans because I cover it in there. You cover your pot, but the, the Rancho Gordo recommendation, I'm going to turn this down and let it simmer now. The Rancho Gordo recommendation for covering, it says cover the beans while they're cooking like this so they leave a little opening. So you see how on my pot it's not completely covered. There's like a little bit of an opening. You let some steam escape but you keep it mostly covered. So the whole time the beans are cooking, they're covered like that. And then, in fact, I'll, I'll cover it like this in a few minutes. They're covered like that, except for the last 30 minutes, okay? So the last 30 minutes, I take the cover off. But uh, I know people have been telling me things like their beans, would you see this? They, they have trouble with their bean um, liquid evaporating, or I think it was less... Um, Swanson who told me last time that he put way too much liquid in his beans and he had too much liquid I think that's what he said Les if you're watching confirm that so what we have here is we have remember I took all the spices and I warmed them and toasted them in the pot and then after they toasted I added some uh, vegetable broth I still have some of my vegetable broth here I didn't put in I had two cups of vegetable broth and um, then the, it, it kind of formed a paste. And then, you know, I put the butternut squash in there and cooked it kind of in that paste of vegetable broth, all the chili powder, cumin, paprika, um, all the stuff, a little bit of, sa a little bit of um, cloves, a little bit of uh, allspice. Taro's back here watching us, you see him? Taro, what you doing? Do you wanna be in the video? You know, he's a ham. Here comes Mochi. He's coming too. Okay, so I've got all this chili powder in here. I've got the butternut squash, and it needs to, I brought it up to a boil. I'm going to let it come back up to a boil since I added that vegetable broth. And I need to taste this, but I've got my spoons over here. I'm going to get a spoon and see how this tastes because I'm not sure if I need to add anything more. And I'm not sure how strong it is. Did I make it? Here's mochi. Look. Did you want to help cook? Or did you want to taste? I don't think chili is for dogs, mochi. Chili is for people. I'm going to see how strong this is. <laughs> it's very 
strong. Oh my goodness. Uh. <laughs> this is for people that like really hot beans. So I'm gonna give you a warning. If you're using authentic New Mexico chili powder, like something from Chamayo, this stuff is really hot. I don't believe the other chili powder I used is that hot, like this chili powder from Fresh Jacks. This is not very hot. In fact, I'm gonna test it out and taste it. So it must be my New Mexico chili powder. Now, this chili powder, well, it is a little hot. Yeah, this one is hot too, that's what it is. So I use two really spicy <laughs> chili powders. Oh my goodness. Well, this is either gonna be the best thing or it's gonna be the worst thing. But I think it's gonna be good. So I'm gonna caution you all, if you're making this, to not use a lot of chili powder if you don't want it to be really spicy, okay? If you're okay with it being really spicy, you know, like you have a really good ability to eat super spicy food, then go ahead. But I would say maybe start with two tablespoons of chili powder and add more because, hi Gilbert Gonzalez, because uh, add more squash or broth to dilute it. No, I don't have any, I'm not gonna add any more squash, although I could add some more squash, but I don't think that it would be good to add too much more squash. Although I do have some that I didn't use, it probably wouldn't hurt to add this. I may add it after the, the video's over. But uh, no, I don't think you need to do anything to dilute it. If you've already put that much chili powder in it, it's a little too late now, there's nothing much you can do. Um, it doesn't need any salt. Um, the author of the recipe suggested that if it's bitter, add sugar. But it's really not bitter. You know, it, the thing about it is, um, I don't think it's bitter at all. It has a really good taste. It's just, um, it's a little on the spicy side. So what this would be good with would be um, maybe a piece of polenta or some grits to soak up the sauce. The sauce tastes really good. So try to make this, but I'm gonna caution you, if you got the Fresh Jacks chili powder, which I've been getting a lot of Fresh Jacks, it's a company, F-R-E-S-H-J-A-X. Um, if you got their chili powder, it's really spicy. If you're using grocery store chili powder, grocery store chili powder is usually really mild, so you'd be okay. But I used four tablespoons and it was a lot. I probably, if I make it again, I probably use half that much. And the recipe called for double what I used. So whoever wrote this recipe, you know, they must really like their food spicy. And if you don't have this um, Hidatsa red beans, um, it was H-I-D-A-T-S-A, -A, you could use, they recommended, um, ayacote beans, or I think you could use pinto beans or even black beans or any kind of beans. So use whatever you like. But I think this is gonna be really good. You know, it's gonna take a few minutes for this butternut squash to cook down. You can kind of see it, it's, you know, it, it's still pretty hard. So it's gonna take a while, but look how pretty that is. And yes, I think you could put sweet potatoes in this or any kind of vegetable you like, any kind of squash, um, you know, whatever sounds good. But the, the flavor comes from all these spices. And since there's no tomato in this, it's gonna have a different flavor profile than what you're used to, because most of us are used to chilies with a tomato base. And so this is a chili without a tomato base, basically. It has more of, you know, taste the spice more than the tomato base. And let's see. So will the beans fall apart now with more simmering? Um, that was from Millie. It, they shouldn't because if you cook the beans until they were done, and my beans, and you can see them, my beans were done, but they weren't to the point where they were falling apart done. So, you know, they're fine. So if you cook your beans all those hours and they're falling apart, 
whoops, you're not seeing the beans. You know, I think that sometimes people are cooking their beans on too high of a temperature because um, I, I hear, that's something I hear from people. They'll say, well, uh, my beans were falling apart, but that doesn't happen to me. So that I think, well, once I've got the beans cooking, I cook them on a very low simmer. So they, they you know, have a long time to cook, but they don't cook too fast. If your beans are getting to the point where by the end of your cooking time, they're falling apart, I think you're probably cooking them on too high a temperature or you're cooking them for too long. Um, there's this, and the beans are not hard to cook, but they're also not that easy because there's kind of this sweet spot where the beans start getting perfect but just because they're perfect, if you keep cooking them, that doesn't make them better. That can make them too soft. So, you know, it's just kind of a, a thing that you develop over time. So just play around with it. Um, remember, you don't have to have all the things I used. I did use um, the Taki Mushroom Umami Powder. I know it's backwards, but that's what this is. And I did use... Uh, you know, the, I use the regular paprika, and then I also used some Spanish paprika. And again, um, oh, Patrice sent 150 stars. Thank you, I appreciate it. And please, um, on, if you're on, a, on Facebook Live on the full screen, hit the bell, because then it will notify you whenever I go live. And that's what Facebook wants me to tell you, because that way, um, you'll be notified and you'll it'll pop up on your screen that Chef Julia is live in case you forgot. Sometimes people will say, you know, they wanted to watch something and, um, you know, they forgot. I usually set alarms on my phone because I forget. But, you know, if you want to remember, but I go live every Monday at 2 o'clock for Bean of the Week. And I'll, be, I'll do it again next week. Oh, and next week... I'm going to make green, French style green lentils, and I'm going to make a lentil salad with grated carrots and mustard vinaigrette. And I think this would be really good for Easter because it's kind of like a salad type of a dish. And um, it's gonna have carrots in it, it's gonna have green lentils. And I do think this would be a nice thing to have as a, a kind of a side. And people are always asking me, well, what can I make? Easter's coming up, what can I make? And so I'm trying to think of different things that might be good. And I think this would be one of them. So that's next Monday is the lentil salad with grated carrots. So for today, we made our wonderful chili, a new kind of chili with butternut squash and red hidatsa beans. And it's cooking along very nicely. You can see it. I think that squash is cooking down. I can taste it and tell you how much time it needs, but it needs another, I think another 10 minutes, but I'll take one and try it. Hmm, wow, it's getting nice and soft. And it has a really good flavor. So, uh, but I do caution you, if you're making this, use less chili powder and if you're using a really hot, spicy chili powder like the type from New Mexico, a little goes a long way. And my chili may be so hot <laughs> that I'm the only one that will eat it, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it in the freezer and I'll eat it with rice. So if it's really spicy, you know, you could eat it with <clears throat> rice, polenta, grits, that kind of thing. So I hope you enjoy making this chili and let me know how yours turns out. And cut back on the chili powder, please. Don't do what I did if you're using New Mexico chili powder. I should know better. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. And um, <clears throat> uh, the travel class is on Saturday. I'm still taking registrations. I have all kinds of fun stuff here that I'm gonna use. I found all these great appliances. Don't mind my messy room here, my dog's here. But if you can look on my little table, well, you can't really see it. I have a bunch of special travel appliances that I purchased just from my class, and they work great. Like I have this little hot pot, and I have been cooking all kinds of stuff in it. I couldn't believe the stuff that I was able to cook in that hot pot. I also found 
all kinds of uh, things at Whole Foods, different snacks that I had never seen before that would really travel well. And I found some different energy bars and I even found some crackers that have no oil that I haven't even opened yet. I'm gonna open them in my class. So I found a lot of really cool things and I have some recipes that have worked out really well that use um, you know, they're Asian where you can make your own noodles and rice dishes in little tiny appliances. So I'm thinking that, you know, if you go somewhere, you can bring your good food with you. You don't have to be, you know, a victim of what's available locally. Uh, and says, your babies are so cute. And oh, how I want to travel. Yeah, I know um, a lot of people probably aren't taking the class because they're not traveling anywhere. But you know, to me, even going to see relatives is traveling. So one of the um, most challenging things for people, uh, those crackers actually do have oil. Look at the fine print under the last ingredient. Oh, I've got to go look now. She said that. But um, like if you're going to visit family and, um, you know, they may not have anything for you to eat. How many times has that happened? Okay, I'm looking. It says no oils. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. Ingredients. Here are the ingredients. Grain-free flour, organic sesame seed, onion, sea salt, flax seed, coconut aminos, poppy seed, garlic, apple cider vinegar, and organic rosemary extract with, oh, I see, organic rosemary, organic coconut oil. Okay, it's the very last ingredient in fine print. Well, okay, maybe we won't have those crackers or maybe my husband will eat those crackers, but I did find a lot of other things. So we do need to be prepared when we're going to people's homes because <clears throat> when you go to somebody's house and um, you don't eat the way they do, then they tell you something like, um, oh, we're having spaghetti. We have a, a nice meal plan. We're having a spaghetti dinner. And then you say, hmm, well, uh, I don't really eat things that have meat in them and butter and, you know, and they say, oh, oh my, well, that's so odd. You know, why didn't you tell me before you came and you never thought of that? Um, Terry says, love your colorful top. Well, thank you, Terry. It's kind of a long shirt thing. It's psychedelic. It's like, you know, bohemian my trademark that I love. Uh, <clears throat> would the travel class be good for camping? You know, I think so, um, you know, to some degree, because one of my friends told me about some things, so I don't have it in here, but uh, she goes camping a lot and she had some tips for me. The only thing is uh, my appliances are electric, so, you know, they're not really set for camping. I think camping, you really need more of your own gas powered, propane powered things or um, camp stove or cast iron pot. But yeah, you could adapt the recipes to camping. The idea here is, you know, what can you take and how can you make things that taste good to you that you can eat? Cause you know, when you go to people's places, a lot of stuff is all um, meat oriented and everybody's having this great big feast and they expect you to eat a salad. Like, well, you know, let's go to the restaurant. You can have salad. I'm like, well, you know, I'm kind of hungry too. You guys are having, you know, prime rib. I don't really want to sit here and eat salad with no dressing. So you kind of find yourself in those situations. We're going to address that. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, can you cook in your hotel room? What can you cook? So we're kind of addressing that. What, what can you bring with you? And, um, you know, some, some gadgets work really well in a microwave. If you if the hotel has nothing but a microwave, some things work really well in the microwave. Like, um, I found Pampered Chef is awesome. They have a lot of good stuff. And, you know, they have some handy little things where you can almost cook a meal in a little microwave cooker. This is a, their micro cooker. It's actually like a microwave rice cooker. This is a real tiny one. But you can make a lot of meals in this little microwave rice cooker. Um, Cindy says, I'm the cook in the family, so they eat what I cook. Well, that's good. I just know that 
I have relatives that live in North Carolina and <clears throat> it's my aunt. And if I have any special dietary requests or needs, they get really upset. They get kind of, um, I don't know, they don't know, they don't handle it very well in the past. You know, they would say something like, oh, well, you know, we're gonna have pork chops and you know, that they would just think it would be odd. Well, now I'm a lot bolder. I've done this longer. And I really don't care so much now what other people think, but I have a different strategy. I will go prepared and, and uh, talk to them ahead of time and say, you know, I don't eat animal products, so, you know, I'm not gonna be eating what I normally eat when I come visit you, <clears throat> but I'll make you food. You know, I'll be glad to make the dinners my way if you wanna, you know, try my recipes. And they probably would take me up on it because what the heck, I'm a chef. So that's my strategy is gonna be, I'm gonna tell them I'll cook the food my way. If they say, oh no, no, we, we've got to have our fried shrimp or whatever it is they wanna have, I'll say, that's fine, but I'm gonna make something for me too. And <clears throat> they're not gonna give me any grief over it. But I keep reading about people that they go somewhere to a family's house or something and people mock them, make fun of them, make them feel uncomfortable, roll their eyes don't provide anything, get angry. I have read so many things like that on Forks Over Knives and other groups, and I just shake my head and think, that's just wrong, you know? And so I have a lot of sympathy, empathy for people that have to go through that. And so my travel class was kind of a way to say, how can you handle it? What can you bring with you that you could eat? What could you bring with you that you could cook your food? Like if you're going somewhere and there's nothing to eat, can you cook yourself a little meal? and not rely on restaurants because we all know at restaurants, um, <clears throat> depending on where you go, it can be kind of limited. You know, some parts of the country, if you go to certain parts of California, for example, they might have a lot of good stuff to eat. But then if you go to a small town that doesn't really have a lot of, you know, vegetarian, vegan options, you might really be limited to just an iceberg lettuce salad. And even the places in California that have been around and have had really good food, they may not be open. I've run into that. We've gone places where, you know, the great places we wanted to go to closed because somebody had COVID and they shut the doors or they just happened to be closed that week because of something, you know, cleaning out the restaurant. Uh, Christine says, my doctor has been very supportive of whole food plant-based. My friends and family are now too. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, the more support you get the better. That's, since I've been talking for so long, I'm going to check this chili. I bet it's done. <clears throat> In that short of a period of time, you know, the butternut squash has softened quite a bit. So I can tell that it's almost done. You know, I can cut it with the, the little spatula. So yeah, I would say in another five minutes or so, it will be done. So it's not going to... And, and also to show you that my beans have been cooking all this time I've been talking, and they're not bursting, they're not falling apart, they're not getting overcooked. So don't worry about your beans getting overcooked. If you haven't, if you haven't cooked them till they're too soft, they're not gonna overcook now. Boy, that smells good. All right, everyone, um, take the travel class if you wanna have some tips for what to do when you're visiting people, what to do when you travel, um, some good recipes that you can make. <coughs> oh, that chili powder. <laughs> um, and I would love to have you in the class. I think it's going to be a fun class. I'm excited about cooking in my tiny little appliances. I've got like a little 80-inch skillet. And it looks like, it looks so small, like you can't even imagine cooking something in it. But it, it, I was able to cook like a whole meal in it easily. So um, sign up for the class and hit the bell to be notified of future Facebook Live videos. And that's really about it. Oh, um, today is day one of the 21 day challenge on the Chef Julia support group. So the 21 day challenge is starting today for 21 days. We eat nothing but the daily dozen, which is whole grains, vegetables, fruit, greens, berries, that kind of thing. 
some few nuts and seeds, drink a lot of water, and exercise 90 minutes a day. And leave out the desserts and the extras and, you know, chips and salsa and that kind of thing. And just kind of really stick with eating whole food plant-based for 21 days just to get in the habit of it. And I start a new one um, usually every 21 days, and today is the first day. I've been doing this since May of last year, and I lost 21 pounds, total of 30 pounds last year, and have kept it off, which I think is the best part. It's over nine months now, and I haven't gained any back. In fact, I'm still losing. So I eat a lot of food. I post what I eat every day on the Chef Julia support group. So you can see that I eat a lot of food. I'm not sitting around eating salad, um, but I also do get up every morning and walk five miles. So I burn a lot of calories during that 100 minutes of walking, but it's still, you know, I do eat very well and I have a really good appetite. So I enjoy my food. So if you want to do that along with me, and I'm, I'm doing it now, you know, I never stop. Um, then join the Chef Julia 21 Day Challenge. It's free, it's on the Chef Julia support group. Read the announcement section and you can uh, decide you wanna do it. That's all you have to do. Um, Barb says, I cook my own food in my small appliance when I had open heart. My husband did it a lot too. Oh, that's good. Well, I'm glad that was something you were able to do. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, you guys, I hope you will um, you know make this and enjoy it and take the class and I see Heather Furman is watching I think Heather made a beautiful sushi dinner recently that she posted pictures of and it was very impressive it looked delicious uh, let's see Jocelyn Barfield said she's doing it she bought my ebook great oh Barb Selby said we did it in the hospital so she had a little cooking appliance and cooked her food in the hospital. Well, that's a good thought because these little appliances, they're so handy, you could take them anywhere. I was so amazed that at the size of, for example, this little skillet. It's a little, it's like an eight inch electric skillet. It's tiny, you could cook. I made like stir fry in this. And you could put rice, noodles, whatever. And then the other thing that I was really impressed by was the hot pot because you can put a lot of liquid in there. So you could make, I'm going to make chili in there today, but soups, chili, uh, anything. And I thought that was really handy because, you know, I know there are people that say they take their Instant Pot wherever they go. Well, Instant Pot's kind of big, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger than that and it's heavier and it takes up more room. I could see myself carrying the little hot pot in a tote bag, setting it up somewhere quietly and then heating up my food or making some kind of food. So I've uh, really enjoyed testing recipes for the travel class and I'm looking forward to teaching it. So I hope you take it. I'm gonna be sending out more recipe packets <clears throat> this afternoon. As soon as I get off of here, I need to do that because I know some new people have signed up. Are all the products from Pampered Chef? No, Dana. Um, I don't have any Pampered Chef connection. I did get those uh, Pampered Chef micro cookers from somebody that I know that has a Pampered Chef business and I was able to get them through her, but all the other stuff I ordered on Amazon and it's in my Amazon store. In fact, you can get the micro cookers on Amazon now, the same Pampered Chef micro cookers. So, um, <clears throat> But, I, you know, Pampered Chef probably has a lot of good travel stuff. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. And hopefully I'll see you on Saturday in the class. If not, I'll see you on the 21-day challenge. Or the next class after this one is in April. <clears throat> I can't remember the date. I think it's April 10th. And it's um, brunch, plant-based brunch dishes. I think that one will be a lot of fun. Okay, Dana said on Amazon, great. Yes, just go to my Amazon store. I made a section called travel, travel tips and dishes. And uh, I think Dana was the one that asked me if it was um, gluten free friendly. And pretty much all my recipes are gluten free friendly because everything I um, use rice noodles, brown rice, uh, oatmeal, 
hard. I don't think any of my recipes had anything that had gluten in them. Uh, I'm making baked potatoes with chili, you know, just different things. None of them are really gluten heavy. Uh, you know, the hippie banana bread is not really a part of the class, but that's something that I take along on trips all the time. So hippie banana bread can be made gluten-free. So I'll see you all. Uh, mochi, if you hear a sound, it's not me. It's Mochi and Taro are over here snoring. Mochi's awake, but Taro is snoring loudly. So they're always my background noise. I have the air conditioner turned off, but the dogs are still making noise. So sorry. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. I'll go put the recipe <clears throat> on here so that you'll have it. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.